Richard I, also known as Richard the Lionheart, was a formidable figure in medieval European history, renowned for his prowess and leadership on the battlefield. Richard ascended to the throne in England in 1189, ruling until his death in 1199. His lineage traced back to Henry II of England and Eleanor of Aquitaine, and though initially an unlikely heir, Richard emerged as a dominant force in European politics. From a young age, Richard exhibited military acumen, taking command of his own army by the age of sixteen and quelling rebellions against his father. However, his most notable exploits came during the Third Crusade, where he played a crucial role as a commander of the Christian forces. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, it's good to see you. And if you're coming back, it's good to see you again. If you'd like to support the channel and everything I do here on YouTube, go and have a look at the Patreon, where all the videos are ad-free. Also, like, subscribe, and comment below if you're enjoying this style of content. Now, without further ado, let's begin our topic for today's video. Richard the Lionheart Richard, born on the 8th of September, 1157, likely at Beaumont Palace in Oxford, England was the son of King Henry II of England and Eleanor of Aquitaine. He grew up alongside siblings William, Henry the Young King, and Matilda, with William passing away before Richard's birth. Despite being a younger son, Richard was not anticipated to inherit the throne. He had four additional siblings from his parents, and two half-sisters from Eleanor's prior marriage to King Louis VII of France. Richard's lineage traced back to William the Conqueror, and according to legend, to figures like Noah and Woden. Raised primarily in England during his father's periodic visits to his various domains, Richard's early years were marked by travels to Normandy with his mother and the care of his wet nurse, Hodierna of St. Albans. While the extent of his English proficiency remains uncertain, Richard was known for his education, displaying talents in poetry and writing in both Limousin and French. During his imprisonment, Richard's brother John leveraged English bias against foreigners to undermine the authority of Richard's Chancellor, William Longchamp, who was Norman. One accusation against Longchamp, made by John's supporter, Hugh Nanant, was his purported inability to speak English, highlighting the expectation of English proficiency for those in positions of authority in the late 12th century England. Descriptions of Richard depict him as physically striking, with reddish blonde hair, light eyes, and a fair complexion. While his exact height is uncertain due to the loss of his remains, some sources claim he stood at six foot five contrasting starkly with his shorter brother John, who was around five foot five. One account describes Richard as tall, with an elegant build, reddish gold hair and a long, well-suited limbs, particularly well-suited for wielding a sword. In medieval Europe, Marriage alliances were not just matters of personal choice, but crucial diplomatic tools that could shape political landscapes. Richard, 
born in 1157 to King Henry II of England and Eleanor of Aquitaine, was destined to play a central role in such engagements. Early on, a marriage pact was proposed between Richard and one of the daughters of Raymond Berenguer IV, the Count of Barcelona, in March 1159. However, due to various circumstances, this plan eventually fell through. Meanwhile, Henry, the young king, Richard's elder brother, solidified an alliance by marrying Margaret, daughter of Louis VII of France, in 1160. This union between the Plantagenets and the Capetians, though seemingly harmonious, occasionally faced tensions inherent in their complex relationship between England and France. Henry II's territorial ambitions further complicated matters, especially in Brittany and the Vexin, leading to conflicts with the French crown. Despite these challenges, Richard's betrothal to Alice, Countess of the Vexin, was finally confirmed in January 1169, after a peace treaty mediated by Pope Alexander III. This betrothal marked a significant diplomatic achievement, as it represented an attempt to bridge the rivalry between the English and French monarchies. Henry II, envisioning a division of his vast territories, planned for Richard to inherit Aquitaine and Poitiers from his mother, Eleanor, thereby securing his position as a powerful vassal in southwest of France. Henry II's illness in 1170 prompted the formal implementation of his territorial division plan. Richard, who at this time was only fourteen years old, was granted the Duchy of Aquitaine, a momentous step towards his independent rule. Together with his mother, Eleanor, Richard embarked on a tour of Aquitaine in 1171, aiming to assert his authority and win over the local populace. The ceremonies held in Poitiers and Limoges in June of 1172 were pivotal in Richard's official recognition as the Duke of Aquitaine and Count of Poitiers. These events marked his transition from a young nobleman to a ruler vested with authority over significant territories. With the backing of his mother and the formalities of investiture, Richard embarked on his journey of becoming one of the most renowned figures in the medieval era, setting the stage for his illustrious reign as the Lionheart. The seeds of rebellion sown within the Plantagenet family bore bitter fruit in the form of Henry the young king's defiance against his father, Henry II. According to Ralph of Coggeshall, the young king sought to assert his independence and stake his claim to the territories promised to him, weary of his father's control over finances and authority. Speculation even arose that Eleanor of Aquitaine, the young king's mother, may have fueled the flames of dissent among her sons, but that is exactly that speculation. Henry the young king's bold move to seek refuge at the French court under Louis VII signaled the beginning of open defiance. Joined by his brothers Richard and Geoffrey, they formed a formidable coalition against their father, strengthened by Louis's support and the accolade of knighthood bestowed upon Richard. Their rebellion, as described by the poet Jordan Fantos, was marked by strife and discord, devoid of all familial affection. 
bound by a solemn oath at the French court. The brothers vowed not to negotiate with Henry II without Louis VII and the French baron's consent. Bolstered by promises of land and wealth, the young king garnered support from influential barons, including Philip I, Count of Flanders, and rallied allies in England, igniting rebellions in various regions. Robert de Beaumont, Earl of Leicester, joined forces with other nobles, launching a rebellion in Suffolk that gained momentum by July 1173, with sieges and captures marking their advance. As the rebellion continued to unfold, Richard took charge of the situation in Poitou, rallying local barons to his cause against his father's supporters in Aquitaine. Eleanor's capture left Richard to lead the campaign independently, facing resistance as he sought to consolidate his base of operations. Though met with a good amount of setbacks, Richard's resolve remained firm as he navigated the tumultuous landscape of that familial strife and politics, laying the groundwork for his future as a formidable leader. The rebellion continued to intensify, and Henry II mobilized a formidable army of over 20,000 mercenaries to quell the unrest. Advancing towards Verneuil, he forced Louis VII into retreat and recaptured Dole, asserting control over Brittany. Despite the military presence, Henry III extended an olive branch to his sons, offering peace, but the Council of Louis led to its rejection. In a swift turn of events, Henry's forces seized Sante's by surprise, capturing much of its garrison, while Richard narrowly escaped, seeking refuge in Chateau de Telebeau. Meanwhile, Henry the young king and the Count of Flanders prepared to support the rebellion in England. However, their plans were thwarted as Henry II swiftly returned with a contingent of soldiers, accompanied by his prisoners, including Eleanor and his son's wives and fiancés. Yet upon his arrival, Henry discovered that the rebellion had already crumbled, with key figures like William of Scotland and Hugh Bigod already captured. Subsequently, Henry returned to France, lifting the siege of Rouen, where Louis VII and the young king had converged after abandoning their English invasion plans. The ensuing defeat led to the signing of the Treaty of Mont-Louis in the September of 1174. With the truce excluding Richard, he found himself to be isolated and vulnerable. In a dramatic plea for forgiveness, Richard sought reconciliation with his father, reportedly shedding tears and falling at Henry's feet. Moved by his son's display of contrition, Henry extended the peace, marking the beginning of a reconciliation process that would also involve Richard's brothers. However, the terms offered to the brothers were less favourable than earlier proposals, with Richard granted limited control over castles in Poitou and Aquitaine. Eleanor, held as a captive, remained a political pawn in Henry II's political manoeuvres, ensuring Richard's compliance with the terms of reconciliation. Following the resolution of the conflict, efforts to restore order in the rebellious territories commenced. Henry undertook the pacification of Anjou, while Geoffrey focused on Brittany. 
In January of 1175, Richard was dispatched to Aquitaine to quell dissent among the barons who had rallied to his cause. The Chronicle of Roger Howden provides insight into Richard's activities during this period, detailing his endeavours to restore control over the region. According to Howden, Richard's directives included the restoration of most rebel-held castles to their pre-war condition, albeit within a tight deadline, with some structures rather slated for destruction. The task proved to be arduous, given the proliferation of stone castles and the extensive fortification that was undertaken by the barons. One notable engagement during Richard's campaign was the two-month siege of castellon sur agen Despite the fortress's formidable reputation, Richard's determined leadership and siege engines eventually compelled the defenders to surrender. It was during this campaign that Richard earned the epithet The Lion, or The Lionheart, for his courageous and indomitable demeanour. References to Richard as Our Lion appear as early as 1187, while the moniker Lionheart is first documented in Ambroy L'Estoire de la Guerre Sainte, and once again, sorry about my French pronunciation, in 1191, during the campaign in Arker, later in the Crusades era. Also, you might hear the French expression Cordelion. Richard de Cordelion just means Richard the Lionheart. But I'll try and keep it in English as much as I can. Now amidst these military exploits, tensions simmered within the royal family. Henry II, weary of him empowering his sons with resources that could be ultimately turned against him, reportedly appropriated Alice of France, that's Richard's betrothed, as his own mistress. This manoeuvre complicated Richard's prospects at marrying Alice, as the union would be deemed illicit by the church. Despite pressure to renounce the betrothal, Richard hesitated as Alice's dowry, which included the strategic Vexin region, held significant political value. Moreover, Alice's familial ties to King Philip II of France posed further complications, as he was a key ally whose goodwill Henry II sought to maintain. Following his failed rebellion against his father, Richard turned his attention to quelling internal revolts within Aquitaine, particularly in Gascony, where his increasingly harsh rule actually managed to incite a major uprising in 1179. The rebels seeking to dispose Richard enlisted the aid of his brothers, Henry and Geoffrey. However, the tide turned in the spring of 1179 at the Charent Valley, where the formidable fortress of Taylorburg stood. Richard employed a strategic approach, decimating the surrounding lands to cut off reinforcements and retreat options for the fortress's defenders. Despite its formidable defences, Richard's forces prevailed, compelling the garrison to sally out and engaging them in battle before seizing the castle in a swift two-day assault. This resounding victory at Taylorburg quelled further rebellion, as many barons pledged allegiance to Richard. In subsequent years, Tensions between Richard and his father kept escalating, with Henry II demanding Richard's homage to Henry the Young King, which Richard adamantly refused. 
The situation reached a boiling point in 1183, when Henry the Young King, along with Geoffrey of Brittany, invaded Aquitaine to subdue Richard. However, Richard successfully repelled the invasion, with his barons rallying to his cause. The conflict intensified with the execution of prisoners, and only paused briefly with the young king's death in the June of 18, 1183, rather, leaving Richard as the eldest surviving son, and also the heir to the English throne. Yet the rift between Richard and Henry had persisted. Exacerbated by Henry's demand for Richard to relinquish Aquitaine, Richard's steadfast refusal prompted Henry II to release Queen Eleanor from captivity and dispatch her to Aquitaine, tasking her with asserting control over Richard's lands. In 1187, Richard sought to bolster his position by forging an alliance with Philip II, the young king of France and son of Eleanor's former husband. Louis the Seventh. Roger of Howden's chronicle depicts Richard's audacious move to secure his castles in Poitou, and defy his father's authority, effectively setting the stage for further confrontations between the father and son. Howden's focus on the political dynamics between Richard and Philip sheds light on their strategic alliance, which was instrumental in shaping the events leading to Richard's ascension. In response to the escalating tensions with his father, and the looming threat posed by Henry's forces, Richard took decisive action by joining Philip in taking the cross at Tours, indicating their commitment to the Crusades. In exchange for Philip's support against Henry, Richard paid homage to him in November 1188. Their combined forces achieved a significant victory over Henry's army at Balans on the 4th of July 1189, prompting Henry to acknowledge Richard as his heir apparent. Just two days later, Henry's death in Chinon paved the way for Richard to ascend to the English throne, as well as inherit the titles of the Duke of Normandy and Count of Anjou. Although Roger of Houghton's account of Henry's death bleeding in Richard's presence remains unverified, it underscores the political intrigue surrounding Richard's rise to power. Richard I's investiture as Duke of Normandy on the 20th of July, 1189, marked a significant step in his ascent to power, culminating in his coronation as King at Westminster Abbey on the 3rd of September, 1189. However, this momentous occasion was marred by violence and persecution against the Jewish community. Despite tradition barring Jews from investiture culture, some Jewish leaders ventured to present gifts to the new king, only to face rather brutal mistreatment at the hands of Richard's courtiers, as recounted by Ralph of Decito. Rumors soon circulated that Richard had ordered the killing of all triggering a vicious attack by the people of London on the Jewish population. Arsonists destroyed many Jewish homes. Several Jews were forcibly converted. And there were also many tragedies of casualties in the mix of all of this. Roger of Howden attributes the violence to jealousy and bigotry among the citizens, with Richard punishing the perpetrators and even allowing forcibly converted Jew to return to Judaism. 
However, Baldwin of Ford, Archbishop of Canterbury, expressed dismay at the unfolding events, highlighting the precarious situation faced by Richard as he prepared to depart on crusade. Recognizing the potential destabilization of his realm, Richard ordered the execution of those responsible for the most egregious acts, including rioters who inadvertently harmed Christian homes. Despite issuing a royal writ to protect the Jews, further violence erupted in March, culminating in a massacre at York. These events underscore the pretty terrible situation during Richard's early reign, which was categorized by religious tensions and challenges to royal authority. In 1187, Richard committed fully to the Third Crusade as Count of Poitou. Following his father and Philip II's lead after the fall of Jerusalem to Saladin in 1188, fearing territorial usurpation during their absence, Richard and Philip agreed to embark on the crusade together. Richard, seeking redemption for his past deeds, raised funds for his crusader army by depleting his father's treasury imposing taxes, and granting positions and privileges for absorbent fees. Notably, he freed William I of Scotland from his oath of subservience, in exchange for a hefty sum. Finalizing agreements on the continent, he appointed various officials to oversee his domains, and left regions to manage affairs in his absence. Troubadours like Bertrand de Bourne criticized Richard's delay in departing for the crusade. Meanwhile, Richard's brother John began scheming against William Longchamp, one of the appointed regents. In pursuit of funds, Richard was reputed to have made a rather interesting remark. Apparently, he had quipped, I would have sold London if I could have found a buyer. In September 1190, Richard and Philip arrived in Sicily, where they encountered political turmoil following the death of King William II. Tancred had seized power, imprisoning Richard's sister, Queen Joan, and withholding her inheritance. Richard demanded her release and restitution, which was granted, partially. However, the unrest continued to persist, leading to a revolt in Messina in October of the same year. Richard intervened, capturing the city and establishing it as his base, leading to a good amount of friction with Philip. After prolonged negotiations, a treaty was signed in March 1191, securing compensation for Joan and confirming Arthur of Brittany as Richard's heir. Despite the initial tensions, Richard and Philip made a full reconciliation, with Richard ending his betrothal to Philip's sister Alice. Before departing for the Holy Land, Richard met with Joachim of Fiore, who shared a prophecy from the Book of Revelation with him. The prophecy was rather motivating, and sent Richard along his way. In April 1191, Richard embarked from Messina for Arca with 17,000 troops, but he didn't get far. A storm scattered his fleet. His sister, Joan, and fiancé, Berengaria of Navarre, along with other ships, was stranded on Cyprus, 
which at the time was ruled by Isaac Comenos. Upon arriving in Lemesos in the 1st of May, Richard demanded their release, but Isaac refused. Richard's forcers then took Lemnos, and various holy land princes, including Guy of Lusignan, pledged support in exchange for backing Guy against Conrad of Montferrat. Local magnates then began to desert Isaac, who initially sought peace, but later attempted escape. By June 1st, Richard's troops led by Guy de Lusignan, conquered the island fully. Isaac surrendered, and Richard named governors, eventually selling Cyprus to the temple Templar's master, Robert de Sable, before departing for Acre on the 5th of June. The swift capture of Cyprus secured a vital maritime route to the Holy Land, and bolstered Richard's reputation and coffers, while the island maintained a Christian stronghold until the Ottoman conquest of 1570. Before departing Cyprus for the crusade, Richard married Berengaria, daughter of King Sancho VI of Navarre, whom he had grown close to at the Navarres tournament. The lavish wedding took place on the 12th of May, 1191, in Lemesos Chapel of St. George, attended by Richard's sister, Joan. Despite being betrothed to Alice, Richard pursued the match to secure Navarre as a fife and align with Eleanor's interests, as Navarre bordered Aquitaine. Richard and Berengaria briefly joined the crusade together, before returning separately. Berengaria faced challenges on her journey home, and did not reach England until after Richard's death. Although Richard expressed some remorse for his past behaviour after his release from German captivity, he and Berengaria remained estranged and their marriage remained childless. Richard arrived at Acre on June 8, 1191, and supported Guy of Lusignan's claim to the kingship of Jerusalem. Despite Guy's wife Sibylla's death during the previous year's siege of Acre, Conrad of Montferrat, Sibylla's half-sister, Isabella's second husband, contested Guy's claim, and was backed by Philip of France and Leopold V, Duke of Austria. Richard also allied with Humphrey IV of Toron, Isabella's first husband. Despite suffering from a serious illness similar to scurvy, Richard aided in the capture of Arca, he quarrelled with Leopold over the disposition of Isaac Comenos, and raised banners, resulting in Leopold's departure from the crusade, followed by Philip's departure due to health issues and disputes with Richard. Richard kept Muslim prisoners as hostages, but feared being trapped in Arca, so he ordered their execution. He then defeated Saladin's forces at the Battle of Arasuf and advanced towards Jerusalem, reaching Beit Nubar before deciding to retreat due to bad weather and other strategic concerns. Negotiations with Saladin were unsuccessful. Then Richard re-fortified Ascalon in early 1192. Following an election, Richard reluctantly accepted Conrad of Montferrat as king of Jerusalem, and sold Cyprus to his protégé, Guy. However, Conrad was assassinated by the assassins before his coronation. Richard's nephew, Henry II of Champagne, 
then married Conrad's widow, Isabella, who at this time was pregnant with Conrad's child. Although the murder remained unsolved, many suspected Richard's involvement. In the June of 1192, the Crusader army approached Jerusalem, but it was divided on strategy. Richard and the majority advocated for attacking Egypt to weaken Saladin, while Hugh III, Duke of Burgundy, insisted on a direct assault on Jerusalem. This disagreement led to a retreat to the coast, as the army lacked a unified command. Minor skirmishes followed, including a notable victory for the Crusaders at the Battle of Jaffa, where Richard's martial prowess was praised by contemporary Muslim sources. However, both sides recognized the growing difficulties of their position. Richard faced plots from Philip and his own brother John, while Saladin's army suffered from low morale due to repeated defeats. Despite attempts to strengthen his bargaining position, such as an unsuccessful invasion of Egypt, Richard realized he needed to return home. He reached a settlement with Saladin on September the 2nd, 1192, agreeing to destroy Ascalon's fortifications and initiating a three-year truce. Ill with Arnaldia, Richard departed for England on October the 9th, 1192. Bad weather during Richard's voyage compelled him to dock at Corfu, then part of the Byzantine Empire under Isaac II Angelos. However, Angelos was not too impressed with Richard. He objected to his annexation of Cyprus, which had previously been Byzantine territory. Disguised as a Knight Templar, Richard sailed from Corfu with four attendants, but their ship was wrecked near Aquilia. This forced Richard and his companions to embark on a dangerous overland journey throughout Central Europe. Subsequently, near Vienna, Richard was captured just before Christmas 1192 by Leopold of Austria, who accused him of arranging the murder of Conrad de Montferrat, and resented Richard's actions at Acre, particularly the tearing down of Leopold's standard. Richard was then held prisoner at Dernstein Castle, under the care of Leopold's ministerialis, Hadmar of Quenring. News of Richard's captivity reached England, where the regents were initially uncertain of his whereabouts. Meanwhile, Richard composed Genus en Prix. That's right, he wrote his own little song about it, a song that expressed his feelings of abandonment, addressed to his half-sister Marie. Pope Celestine III, considering the detention of a crusader contrary to public law, decided to excommunicate Leopold. And this was a big deal, by the way. If you got excommunicated, your people were very displeased with you. Richard was later transferred to Trefell's castle, under the custody of the Holy Roman Emperor, Henry the Sixth. I know there's a lot of Henrys, just bear with me. Who was aggrieved by Richard's support for Henry the Lion's family and his recognition of Tancred in Sicily. Henry demanded an exorbitant sum, a big ransom set at 150,000 marks, 
and that was equivalent to two or three times the annual income of the English crown under Richard. Eleanor of Aquitaine, Richard's mother, tirelessly worked to raise the ransom. Leopold proposed a marriage between his heir Frederick and Eleanor, fair maid of Brittany, niece of Richard, as part of the ransom negotiation. Clergy and laymen were heavily taxed, church treasures were confiscated, and additional funds were raised from taxes wherever they could get them. Despite John and King Philip of France offering a ransom to prolong Richard's captivity, the money was eventually raised, and Richard was released on the 4th of February 1194. Philip sent a warning to John upon Richard's release, indicating that the devil is loose. Additionally, pressure from the Pope compelled Frederick to abandon the marriage plan with Eleanor after Leopold's sudden death. Now, during Richard's absence, his brother John had rebelled with the support of Philip II of France, who successfully conquered Normandy, among other territories, during Richard's imprisonment. However, upon Richard's return, he forgave John, and reaffirmed him as his heir, instead of their new nephew, Arthur. To nullify the shame of his captivity, Richard underwent a second coronation ceremony at Winchester, on 11th of March, 1194. After this, he immediately initiated the reconquest of Normandy, focusing on building a new stronghold to defend the duchy and serve as a base for his campaign. Despite the terms of the Treaty of Louviers prohibiting fortifications, Richard embarked on the construction of the formidable Chateau Gaillard. The Archbishop of Rouen, initially reluctant to sell the necessary land, eventually acquiesced after Richard seized the property amid opposition from the church. Construction of Chateau Gaillard, although costly, proceeded swiftly under Richard's personal supervision. Its innovative design and efficient construction made it one of the finest castles in Europe. Richard made the chateau his favoured residence, evident in official documents bearing its name. Determined to resist Philip's expansionist ambitions, Richard formed alliances and waged war against him. Despite Philip's military successes, Richard secured victories at battles like Fretival in 1194 and Gisors in 1198, where he adopted the motto, God and my right, which later became the motto of the British monarchy. In March 1199, Richard found himself in Limousin, quelling a revolt led by Viscount Aymar V of Limoges. Despite it being Lent, Richard mercilessly ravaged the Viscount's land in a campaign marked by fire and sword. He then turned his attention to the insignificant castle of Chalus Chabrol, which some chroniclers suggest was due to rumours of a hidden treasure trove of Roman gold. On the 6th of March, 1199, tragedy struck as Richard was struck in the shoulder by a crossbow bolt during the siege. The wound quickly turned gangrenous, sealing Richard's fate. There was nothing they could do about it. Desiring to confront his assailant, Richard learned that the crossbowman was a youth seeking revenge for Richard's prior action against his family. Remarkably, Richard 
forgave the boy and granted him freedom, showing a final act of mercy before his death on the 6th of April, 1199, in the presence of his mother. Richard's death marked the end of an era, earning him the posthumous epithet, The Lion by the Ant. His remains were then divided, with his heart interred in Rowan, his entrails in Chalos, and the rest of his body laid to rest beside his father in Fontevraud Abbey. In 2012, analysis of Richard's embalmed heart revealed symbolic substances, including frankincense. In the years following his death, Bishop Henry Sandford claimed to have witnessed Richard's ascent to heaven in a vision, suggesting his purification in purgatory. With no legitimate heirs, Richard's brother John succeeded him as king. Although his French territories initially favoured his nephew Arthur, Richard's passing without direct heir marked the beginning of the decline of the Angevin Empire. Thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure to have you here with me again today. I'd like to, before we end the video, give a thank you to my Mega Chad member on the Patreon, Stark Factory, for his contribution to the channel. Thank you very much, Stark Factory. I know you're out there listening. If you would like to become a patron and get all of the videos ad-free, along with supporting the channel and keeping me going, then follow the links in the comments and description to the Patreon. It's all so easy these days, isn't it? Otherwise, make sure you're looking after yourself and looking after the people around you and don't do anything that I wouldn't do. Good advice. I will see you in the next video, everybody. Good night.